Good morning and welcome back to Other Worlds Wednesday on Gaming with ADHD. Today I wanted to take a second look at the Rogues Gallery accessory, originally released in 2019. I briefly touched on the deck in my review of the Shadowrun 6 World Game Master screen, but it was kind of cursory and not very detailed. So why am I looking at the Rogues Gallery again? Well, in September 2021, I got the chance to go to Gen Con again. And due to all of the COVID restrictions, this year was pretty different. Uh, once the dealer's hall closed for the evening, most of the exhibitors kept to themselves instead of running events or really hanging out in the convention center. In years past, because I do uh, go and assist Mantic Games, uh, I've actually been pretty busy at night, uh, running events for people, uh, you know, small private gatherings, you know, things like that. So we got pretty occupied. But this year, because none of that was happening, for the first time, my evenings were pretty open. Now this year, I was also fortunate to be there with my oldest son, uh, whom we affectionately know as the Enabler. And one evening with nothing else to do, uh, and him being a little bit indecisive, uh, I messaged a good friend of mine and asked him if he would be willing to run a Shadowrun one-shot. Now, some of you may have heard of this friend of mine. Uh, it's Jason Hardy. He is the current Shadowrun line developer. And after, with, after checking with his wife and some of his associates from Catalyst Game Labs, he agreed to run the game, and we ended up with about eight players. And that mission is why I wanted to take another look at the Rogues Gallery. But before we get started, do make sure if you like what I'm doing here, like the video. It helps share it around. It helps make sure that people know that it exists. And also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Uh, the ADHD is really strong at times, so I move around with all sorts of different products from different companies. Uh, but Shadowrun is one of my favorites, and while I have a lot of content available for it already, I'm definitely going to be making more, and I'd love it if you came along. So, like I said, make sure to like and subscribe. So, to start off with, let's take a look at the sales pitch text from the Catalyst Games web store. Whether on the desperate streets or in the Machiavellian high-rises of the corporate elite, dangerous people lurk in every corner of the sixth world. And they're in here too, with a quick backstory, a hook, and streamlined game stats. Bring the Shadowrun universe to life by putting these characters at your fingertips and in your game. Rogue's Gallery is an NPC reference deck for Shadowrun Six World. Rogue's Gallery contains 27 street NPCs, 15 veteran NPCs, 5 elite NPCs, 3 legendary NPCs, and 8 reference cards. So, right from the get-go, we know that this is a deck of cards designed to help the Game Master with a selection of 50 NPCs that they can place into their games, whether using them for published scenarios or scenarios of their own creation. Now, I like this. This is a lot of variety, and so let's take a closer look at the actual product itself. So, this is essentially what you get. You get your deck of NPCs, four uh, reference cards in standard format, four reference cards in large format, and then a quick uh, instruction card plus you know, a small advertisement for the Game Master screen, which uh, I will have that link down below. Uh, you will want to check it out. These are, uh, the, the screen was designed to actually make use of these cards, make it easier for the Game Master to organize them. So definitely check that out. Now, uh, I want to take a little bit closer look at some of the, the cards themselves. So with our deck of NPCs, as you can see, it starts out with, you know, a full-size portrait of the character in question, we get a name and a quote. And so in this case, it says, you've got the skills, I've got the line on the work, you've got the attitude, there's the door. So, this is, uh, this is one of my favorites because this actually is a portrait of Jason Hardy, if 
uh, if you weren't aware, if you've never seen pictures of him. Uh, but this is this is him. And there are, uh, I only know a few of the references in the deck, and I'll actually point those out as we go through them. Uh, but if you know of any others, put them down in the comments. I'd love to know who they reference, whether it's writers or artists, um, because I think it was a fun little uh, insert for these people that work on the game uh, to, you know, to get a little bit of a shout out, uh, you know, in that way. So, uh, we've got Torin Skelly, Esoteric, Jinx, Dane O'Kelly. Now, this one I know is based on Lauren Coleman. He is, uh, the head of Catalyst Game Labs. Uh, his quote is, Morals? Ha! My guiding principle is Nuyen, nothing else. Uh, Siren, Jaegerbomb, Vendetta Violent, The Cherub, Tinkerbell, Moses, Lodestar, Slam Thompson, Barrett Rickards, Shock Money. So, I mean, one complaint I will make about the cards, they are pretty dark. So some of the some of the detail does get a little a little lost, uh, but overall it's it's very classic Shadowrun art. I know a lot of it's been reused, uh, yeah, which I don't mind. I think this is a great reuse of the material, uh, especially because it takes it off of the pages and makes it in a little bit more uh, usable format for the game master. Uh, but we've also got a variety. We've got humans, we've got trolls, we've got elves, dwarves, uh, orcs. Yeah, we've got everything. Uh, this is Chauvin. This is actually Cat uh, Hardy, who is the artist of this picture. Uh, this was originally in the... Well, the first time I saw it was in the Sixth World Core Rulebook. And uh, I got to sit and have lunch with Cat. And she was gracious enough to actually autograph my copy of Six World. Uh, and she autographed her picture. So that was kind of exciting. I really like that. Uh, we've got Echo X. This is Echo Chernick, one of my favorite Shadowrun artists. Um, and obviously she got she's a, a big fan of Shadowrun as well. And so she got her own card, and I think that was awesome. Uh Let's see. But yeah, so we've got 50 different different characters. There's a lot of variety, a lot of different options. Um, you know, and I think that is... You know, I think that's one of the best parts about it. There's so much variety that, you know, it, it could be used for a long time. So, all right. So that is a quick look at all of the cards um as you can see on the front you're gonna get your portrait your name and uh, a quote just to give you a little bit of idea of the character's personality now when we flip the card over which let me go ahead and center this so i can zoom in a little bit better the camera focus gets a little weird sometimes all right so, now that we're zoomed in, all right, so on the back of the card, we're going to get a, a, a smaller version of the portrait, the name, and what they are. So, we've got a human male face character. So, he's going to be the, the guy that, that, that's about talking, that's going to talk to Mr. Johnson, that's going to you know, talk his way into the the corporate security desk, you know, whatever it is. Uh, we get a little bit of a background on the character. So in this case, born to court par parents, geeked by quick on the trigger runners. He got dumped in the labor pool. He chose the streets and works with teams who know when and how to shoot. Uh, we then get uh, all of the different attributes that are needed for the character. Uh, the defense rating, condition monitor, initiative rank. We're then going to get skills. So in this case, this is 
uh, any skills, but also any spells or technomancer uh, technomancer powers, uh, etc. And then any gear that they come with. Now, one thing I do really like about what they added on here on the back is this last little bit here on the bottom, the hook. So Skelly knows about uh, a hit out on the players, but he's willing to talk before the guns come out. Okay, so gives you a little bit of an idea uh, of what the character's motivation is. If you don't have an adventure planned, here's something that you can use for the players. And I think that is a, a great way for the GM, uh, whether you know it's for a pre-planned adventure or whatever, be able to sink in another adventure hook. Uh, now, uh, with the character cards, they also then give the different reference cards. So we'll go through these a little bit quicker. Uh, so we've got Adept Powers as we get some focus, armor, arcane gear, whoa, not sure what's happening with the focus there, uh, comm links and cyber decks, electronics, and rigor command consoles. So just some basic equipment, and then in the larger cards, We've got different augmentations, spells, complex forms. So these are your Technomancer programs, uh, weapons. Uh, we've got vehicles. Okay, so they give you a lot of information on these cards. They get very flexible. Uh, one thing that I actually... Uh, you know, in addition to all of the information that you may need, uh, number one, it it pulls it off of the character card and puts it in a more uh, you know reference type uh, status. Uh, I like that because what they've done is this line here, this card code. Uh, basically, it's a it's an abbreviation, so it doesn't necessarily uh, you know match up uh, exactly to the name, but it gives you enough of a reference that, you know, instead of saying bone density augmentation on the card, it just says BDA. So uh, basically they can pack more information into the character cards. And I think that was a great, um, a great choice uh, for the design. Uh, I also think it makes the characters that you get out of it a lot more useful. So, with all of that said, what does any of this have to do with the story that I told at the beginning of this video? So, uh, well, basically we had eight unprepared players. We were all at Gen Con. Nobody had been preparing for a game of Shadowrun, but we all ended up together. So, with... a. Uh, with, we didn't have you know time to just sit there and guide everybody through making characters. My son had never played Shadowrun before. Uh, and so you know instead of worrying about uh, about you know trying to do all of that for something that yeah you know, wasn't going to be a regular game, um, basically we had about an hour of prep time. you know some people were showing up late, things like that. And uh, during that, uh, Jason went around and asked people what kind of character they wanted to play. Uh, I wanted a mage. My son wanted, uh, you know, a street samurai that was focused on shooting. Uh, and so, as he, as people would tell Jason what they wanted to play, uh, he would go through and find a card, find a character that was a lot closer, and hand that off to the player. Uh, to me, that was fantastic. We had instant characters off of this. Now, I'm not saying this is unique or unheard of or a novel concept in general, but it was to me. Usually when I come across NPCs, whether it's in a supplement or, uh, you know, online, you know, wherever somebody's posted the end or wherever the NPC shows up, uh, to me, you know, it's something for the GM. It's not something that I'm going to need to worry about. Uh, 
it hadn't occurred to me to use it as uh, as a player character. So how does this help? Well, in a couple of ways. First, if the GM wants to run a one shot or try Shadowrun, you know, say they're say they're playing Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, you know, a couple of the players can't show up that night, but the GM's been dying to try Shadowrun. Well, here's a quick way that he can toss out some characters uh, to to his players, and they can jump into the game with uh, with a minimum of fuss. Uh, they don't have to worry about character creation. And they can just focus on learning the rules, learning how the game plays, and get into the fun right away. Second, if a player is having trouble with either building their character or they want to try some different things, they have options instead of having to build these characters from scratch every time. Uh, finally, it can have the added benefit of getting a player out of their comfort zone. Now, uh, in this particular game... Uh, Jason's uh, Jason's wife was there, and I happened to be sitting next to her. She's a fantastic per person to sit with and have a conversation, by the way. Um, but she was very used to playing a healing, protecting style of, uh, of shaman or magic user when, when she plays. And the card that she got ended up being a combat mage. So... Uh, after the game, she mentioned that she was definitely confused about how to play it as it wasn't what she was used to. But to me, being an outside observer, I thought she did really well at taking this character, coming up with options that both fit her play style and uh, adapting that to the character that she was given, you know, just on a whim for a one-off. Uh, so in conclusion, I actually think this is a... A very underrated product and it definitely deserves a closer look whether you are a GM needing material that's easy to drop into a run or a player looking for some inspiration I think there are great uses for this product on both sides of the screen now it retails for $19.99 available on the catalyst games web store or at your local establishment that carries Shadowrun products uh, I unfortunately have not seen a digital version of this, uh, which would be kind of nice, uh, especially with a lot of people still playing remotely, uh, things like that. So overall, definitely recommend picking this up. Uh, I'm glad that I've got it in my collection, and I hope you got something out of this. Uh, with that said, if you liked what I did, please do like the video, uh, share it around, uh, or, you know, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm definitely going to be doing more Shadowrun in the future, and I'd be happy to have you along. So, uh, last thing, uh, I do put a drive through RPG link down in the description. Uh, if you are planning on picking up any uh, any role playing PDFs, uh, I'd absolutely appreciate it if you use the link. It does help me uh, offset some of the costs of uh, of purchasing products for reviews, uh, but that's up to you. Regardless, thank you for your time, and we'll see you soon.